Summary Overview, Chapter 12, Devadatta, Section 1, Paragraphs 1 to 11. Shakyamuni Buddha reveals his past life as a king who had been pursuing the unsurpassed enlightenment. For the sake of the Dharma, he abdicated his throne to serve the seer who taught him the Lotus Sutra for a thousand years. At that time, the Buddha addressed Bodhisattvas, heavenly gods, humans, and the four groups of people, saying, In the remote past, for immeasurable kulpas ago, I had been seeking the Lotus Sutra incessantly. During those many kulpas, I was always reborn as the king who made a vow to pursue the unsurpassed enlightenment with an unwavering mind. Wishing to fulfill the six paramitas, I diligently practiced generosity by giving alms such as elephants, horses, seven rare objects, countries, wives, children, maids, servants, my own head, eyes, marrow, brain, and my own flesh and limbs without being parsimonious. I did not hesitate to sacrifice my life either. During that age, the lifespan of a human was immeasurably long. But for the sake of the Dharma, I abdicated my throne and deputed the kingdom to the crown prince. Sounding the drums and sending out a proclamation, I sought the Dharma everywhere by saying, Whoever is able to teach me the great vehicle, I am willing to be his servant and provider for the rest of my life. Then a seer came forward to the king and said, I have a great vehicle sutra called the Lotus Sutra. If you are agreeable to following me, I shall preach the Dharma for you. Hearing the words of the seer, the king was suffused with exuberant joy. Immediately, he followed the seer and provided him with whatever he needed, picking fruits, drawing water, gathering firewood, preparing meals, or even offering his own body as a couch and seat, never once being fatigued in his body or mind. In such a manner, he served the seer earnestly for a thousand years, ensuring that the seer had no deficiency whatsoever. All this was done for the sake of the Dharma. Thereupon, the Bhagavath, wishing to reiterate his meaning, proclaimed in stanzas. I remember in the kulpas of remote past. Although, I was the king in the world. For the sake of seeking the Dharma. I was not greedy in the enjoyment of the five desires. Striking the bell, I proclaimed everywhere. Who possesses the great Dharma? If anyone is able to preach the Dharma for me. I shall be his slave and servant. There came a seer with the name Asita. He told the king. I have the magnificent Dharma of the most sublime. A Dharma that is rare in this world. If you are willing to practice. I shall expound it for you. Hearing the words of the seer. My heart was fluttering with great joy. Immediately, I followed the seer. Providing him with all his needs such as gathering firewood, picking fruits and gourds, rendering him respect at all times. My mind and body had never grown weary. This was because I cherished the magnificent Dharma in my heart. For the sake of all living beings, I diligently sought the great Dharma, not for my own sake, nor for the gratification of the five desires. Hence, as the great king, he sought the Dharma diligently, which resulted in his eventual success in attaining Buddhahood. This is the history I have explained to you today. Summary Overview, Chapter 12, Devadatta, Section 2, Paragraphs 1-7 Shakyamuni Buddha reveals the truth that Devadatta was the former seer who taught him the Lotus Sutra. Because of this good friend, he was able to attain supreme perfect enlightenment. He predicted that Devadatta would become a Buddha with the name King of the Heavenly Gods Tathagata in the land of Divine Way. The lifespan of that Buddha would be twenty medium kulpas and his true Dharma would last for twenty medium kulpas. People who believe in this Devadatta chapter will not fall into the three evil paths of hell, hungry spirit, or beast. Instead, they will be reborn in a favorable realm in which they will have the opportunity to hear the Lotus Sutra. Key Messages even though Devadatta was an evil person who attempted to harm the Buddha, he would also be able to attain Buddhahood eventually. This signifies that all beings, good or evil, have the Buddha nature within to achieve supreme perfect enlightenment. 
Besides, it also implies the importance of having good friends who share the gift of Buddha Dharma for the benefit of others. The Buddha said to his monks, The former king at that time was I myself, and the seer was the man who is the now Devadatta. Because Devadatta was a good friend of mine, I was able to fully master six paramitas, develop benevolence, compassion, joy, and non-attachment, and be endowed with thirty-two features, eighty types of physical elegance, purplish golden skin, the ten powers, four kinds of fearlessness, four social rules, eighteen distinctive qualities, and divine powers of the way. Hence, the reason I was able to attain supreme perfect enlightenment to widely save all living beings was solely due to the good friend of mine, Devadatta. The Buddha declared to the four types of people, after immeasurable kulpas have passed, Devadatta will become a Buddha with the name King of the Heavenly Gods Tathagata, worthy of offerings, perfect in true wisdom and enlightenment, perfect in knowledge and conduct, well liberated, the omniscient, the almighty, master trainer, teacher of heavenly gods and humans, Buddha Bhagavath. His land will be called the Divine Way. During that time, King of the Heavenly Gods Buddha will dwell in the world for twenty medium kulpas, widely expounding the magnificent Dharma to guide living beings as numerous as the Ganges' sands in attaining arhatship. He will lead immeasurable living beings to conceive the desires for attaining the stage of Prayika Buddhas and will awaken living beings as numerous as the Ganges' sands to the aspiration of attaining the unsurpassed way. He does so with the aim to enable all of them to gain the assurance of non-rebirth and the stage of non-regression. After King of Heavenly Gods Buddha enters Nirvana, his true Dharma will endure in his world for twenty medium kulpas. A seven-jeweled pagoda of sixty yojana in height and forty yojana in width and depth will be built to preserve his entire body's relics. All heavenly gods and humans will give an assortment of flowers, powdered incense, burning incense, paste incense, clothing, necklaces, streamers, banners, jeweled canopies, music, hymns, and chants to worship the majestic seven-jeweled pagoda. Innumerable living beings will be awakened to the stage of Prayika Buddha and inconceivable living beings will aspire to attain enlightenment, reaching the stage of non-regression. The Buddha declared to the monks, in future lifetimes, if there are virtuous men and women who believe and revere without any doubts upon hearing the Devadatta chapter of the Lotus Sutra, these people will not fall into the paths of hell, hungry spirit, or beast. Instead, they will be reborn in the presence of Buddhas in the Ten Directions and they will always hear the Lotus Sutra at the place in which they are born. If they are born in the realm of human or heaven, they will enjoy supreme, wonderful joy. If they are born in the presence of a Buddha, they will be born through the transformation of lotus flowers. Summary Overview, Chapter 12, Devadatta, Section 3, Paragraphs 1-11 Bodhisattva accumulated wisdom wonders whether there is evidence of living beings who were able to attain Buddhahood quickly through the Lotus Sutra. Bodhisattva Manjushri cites the evidence of the dragon girl who was able to attain enlightenment instantaneously through the Lotus Sutra, despite being an eight-year-old girl in a dragon form. Meanwhile, a Bodhisattva attendant from the region beneath that of Abundant Treasures Bhagavath who was called Accumulated Wisdom, asked Abundant Treasures Buddha, Shall we return to our homeland? Shakyamuni Buddha replied to accumulated wisdom, O virtuous man, wait a while. Bodhisattva Manjushri is here with us and we shall meet him for a discussion on the magnificent Dharma before returning to your homeland. At that moment, Manjushri was seated on a thousand-petal lotus flower as huge as the carriage wheel. Bodhisattvas accompanying him were also seated on jeweled lotus flowers. He emerged gracefully from the palace of Dragon King Sagara, in the great oceans, floating in the air. Having arrived at Eagle Peak and descended from the lotus flower, he reached the Buddha's abode. He greeted by making obeisance at the feet of the two Bhagavaths. Then he proceeded to the place of accumulated wisdom and exchanged pleasantries with him before retiring to one side. Bodhisattva accumulated wisdom asked Manjushri. How many living beings have you transformed at the palace of the Dragon King? Manjushri replied, The numbers are immeasurable and incalculable. They are inexpressible in words or inconceivable by the mind. Wait a second. Let me bring evidence for you. Even before he had finished his reply, 
innumerable bodhisattvas seated on the jeweled lotus flowers emerged from the oceans and arrived at Eagle Peak, where they remained elevated in the air. These bodhisattvas had all been taught, transformed, and saved by Manjushri. Those who had mastered bodhisattva practice were having a discussion on the six paramitas. Those shravakas who previously carried out the shravakas practices in Midair were now practicing the Mahayana's principle of emptiness. Manjushri said to accumulated wisdom, These are the people in the oceans who were taught by me. Thereupon, Bodhisattva accumulated wisdom spoke in stanzas of praise. The one of great wisdom, virtue, courage, and strength. You have transformed and saved immeasurable living beings. All of us in the great assembly have witnessed them now. You have eloquently expounded the true characteristics and meanings of the Dharma, revealed the Dharma of one vehicle, and widely led all living beings to quickly attain the way of Bodhi. Manjushri continued, When I was in the oceans, I always expounded only the Lotus Sutra. Bodhisattva accumulated wisdom asked Manjushri, This sutra is indeed profound, sublime, and marvelous. Exceptionally rare in the world, it is a treasure among all sutras. Are there any living beings who have been able to attain Buddhahood quickly through diligently practicing the Lotus Sutra? Manjushri replied, Yes, the dragon king Sagra's daughter who has just turned eight years old. Wise and intelligent, she readily understands the karma of all living beings. Having obtained the dharni, she is able to embrace and uphold the profound secret treasury as revealed by the Buddhas. She is also able to enter deep meditation and achieve full understanding of various doctrines. In an instant, she is awakened to the aspiration of enlightenment and attains the stage of non-regression. She has acquired an unhindered eloquence and a compassionate mind that treats all living beings as her children. Her merits are accomplished. Her thoughts and discourses are as subtly wonderful as they are magnanimous. Compassionate and benevolent in disposition, gentle and elegant in determination, she has attained enlightenment. Bodhisattva accumulated wisdom said, I observe that Shakyamuni Tathagata has been practicing ascetic actions to accumulate merits and virtues for immeasurable kulpas. He has been seeking the Bodhisattva way without respite. I observe throughout Trachiliacosm that there is not a place as minuscule as the mustard seed where he has not sacrificed his body and life as a Bodhisattva for the sake of living beings. Only after accomplishing all these can he finally attain enlightenment. Therefore, it is difficult to believe that this girl could achieve supreme perfect enlightenment almost instantaneously. Summary Overview, Chapter 12, Devadatta, Section 4, Paragraphs 1 to 10. The dragon girl suddenly appears and shows actual proof of her attaining Buddhahood in an instant. Both Bodhisattva accumulated wisdom and Shariputra, who initially did not believe a woman could attain Buddhahood, were subsequently convinced. Key Messages The form of a living being is irrelevant in the attainment of Buddhahood. This is also a testament of the power of the Lotus Sutra in saving all living beings so that they can cross the sea of suffering to the shore of eternal happiness. Before his words ended, the Dragon King's daughter suddenly appeared before the Buddha. She bowed her head in obeisance, retired to one side and spoke in stanzas of praise having a profound understanding of sins and blessings. He illuminates the universe in the ten directions. Endowed with thirty-two features. Eighty types of physical elegance. His Dharma body was sublime, pure and magnificent. A manifestation of glorious adornment. He is revered by heavenly gods and humans. And respected by spirits and dragons. All living beings. Worship him with deference. I have heard the truth to attaining enlightenment. Only the Buddha alone is able to bear testament. I will reveal the teaching of the great vehicle. To save all living beings from affliction. Thereafter, Shariputra said to the dragon girl, You said that you have attained the unsurpassed way in a short period of time. This is indeed difficult to believe. Why? Because the body of a woman is filthy and soiled, not an ideal vessel for the Dharma. 
how could you be able to attain the unsurpassed enlightenment? The road to Buddhahood is far and long, one can finally accomplish success after spending immeasurable kulpas practicing austerities, accumulating merits, and carrying out all types of perfection. Furthermore, a woman is subject to five obstacles. First, a woman cannot become King Brahma, second, a woman cannot become Lord Chakra, third, a woman cannot become Devil King, fourth, a woman cannot become the Holy King of Will Turning, and fifth, a woman cannot become a Buddha. How could you, assuming the body of a woman, be able to attain Buddhahood so quickly? Meanwhile, the dragon girl owned a precious pearl worth at least trachiliacosm. She presented it to the Buddha, and the Buddha immediately accepted it. The dragon girl said to Bodhisattva accumulated wisdom and the esteemed Shariputra, I offered the precious pearl and the Bhagavat accepted it immediately. Was the action quick? Yes, indeed, it was very quick, they replied. The dragon girl said, Use your divine powers to catch a glimpse of me becoming a Buddha, it will be even quicker than that. At that moment, members of the assembly witnessed the dragon girl transforming herself into a man in an instant, mastering all the bodhisattva practices, proceeding to the spotless world in the south immediately, taking a seat on a jeweled lotus, and attaining supreme perfect enlightenment. Endowed with thirty-two features, eighty types of physical elegance, he saves all living beings everywhere in the ten directions by expounding the magnificent dharma eloquently. When bodhisattvas, shravakas, eight divisions of gods and dragons, humans, and non-humans beings witnessed from afar the transformation of the dragon girl to a Buddha who expounded the Dharma universally to heavenly gods and humans, they rejoiced and made an obeisance respectfully at a distance. Immeasurable living beings attained the stage of non-regression after having heard the teaching and understood the meanings. Immeasurable living beings received the prophecy of attaining the way. Spotless world trembled in six different ways. In the Saha world, three thousand living beings attained the stage of non-regression and three thousand living beings aspired for enlightenment. All of them were given the prophecy of enlightenment. Bodhisattva accumulated wisdom, Shariputra, and the rest of the attendees silently believed and accepted the truth. <laughs>